Let's talk about when we first met, because mm. this is a, a conversation about training. And this <laughs> is a conversation about ambitions for young theater artists who are coming on. Yes. We met at the National Theatre School. We did. When you ran the first one. When I had just arrived. Yeah. Just arrived in Montreal. We're running the National Theatre School. And I remember a lot about you, but the thing I remember most about you was a class session that we did on Greek tragedy monologues. Yeah. And you had each of us attempt a four-page speech. Yeah. And mine was something about the monsters coming out of the sea and... Uh, it's, it's the messenger you telling... You didn't do the Oedipus one? No, it was the destruction of... I remember you. Uh, by the monster yes. coming out of the sea. And yes. this this is 1970. So this is still burned in my memory, you, Joy, sitting there trying to get Robert to s understand the size of this piece. And I couldn't think why this Greek thing we were doing. Yes. Why did you choose these Greek monsters? Because I had, I had come back from Greece. Well, I, I was, I fell in love with Greek theatre with Dorothy Summers at UBC, and I knew all the plays very well. And I, yes, I think it's my favourite. It's above Shakespeare for me. Is the Greek theatre. Um, I did it because there was a chance to, for that year you were in, which was a very difficult year that had been through a lot of really f tough stuff in their first year. And I wanted the choruses in order to get a vocal and a physical uh, union somehow uh, between everybody. Um, I always remember somebody, people were collapsing all the time. they bump into one another. First thing you know, someone was on the floor. And everybody was going, everybody was very emotional. And I remember saying, I think it was Diane, I was on the floor and I remember going like this and saying, can you get up or not? Because everybody was hysterical. It was very difficult. And I thought with these big chunks that the hysteria would drop away because it would be nothing compared to what the, the challenge of just being simply there to describe the horror to another human being. The trouble with teaching is you can't teach acting. You cannot teach it. You can give practice in it, and you can sort of, well, some people make the mistake of, of being, of, of inspiring and, you know, molding people and becoming part of their lives. And I think it's all about freedom. It's all about kicking people out and letting them get on with their lives to do it. And, um, you mean as a teacher of yeah, acting students? Yeah, acting students. You don't tie them to your, and say, you know, you need me. And I will tell you what is right and wrong. You, you throw them in the deep end somehow and then you're there if they drown. You're there if they don't know how to do anything. You get them to float for a while. And... Let's talk a bit more about the National Theatre School. Yes. You were there for two years, three years teaching? Two years. Two years. And I came in, the, the idea, at the Playhouse and at the National Theatre School, the idea was that I would come in until they found someone else. That was the deal. And was it? And finally, I found my, the new person myself. And then he fired me after he got in. Arnie. Yeah. <laughs> he fired all of us. Arnie said it all. Yeah. Well, it was supposed to be. He came in a year early, and then I was supposed to stay with with the other people for a year, and he just fired us all. But when Bell Davis was let go, the yes. school must have approached you. And did they talk about wanting to do a change of direction of, for theatre students? No. No, it was a crisis, and there was nobody, and Jack was transferred right. to Montreal, and I, I was coming to Montreal, and I had taught at UBC, and I, I just finished at the Playhouse, and, and, you, and would I come until they found somebody? And did you hear about the direction that our first year had been taken in terms of approach to... Oh, yeah, I knew about so. it when it was happening, yeah. I knew from students as well as from, you know, Hutch. Of course, Hutch is... Very dear to me. And Hutch probably spoke to David and said, Joy's coming and we can work for the first 
you know. But I didn't plan to be there as long as I was, even. So let's talk a bit about... So that was absolutely you at that moment, that I was concentrating on you and the group in front of me. I wasn't planning a, a new... I was going to bring what I knew. See, because it, I was taught a very simple formula by Dorothy Somerset at UBC, which has always worked for me as an actor. Dorothy taught me that you... You look at the text, you say, what am I doing? Why am I doing it? And then the next question could be, how? Those are the only three questions you can ask. What am I doing? Why what? am I doing it? How shall I do it? She said, forget that. If, if you get the what and the why, and you, and you get them finer and finer, so you've got the white in, in general, the why and this, then, then you, you have to be more particular about it, right? Now let's take a text. Uh, what am I saying? Why am I saying it? As soon as you say, how shall I say it? You're outside, you're done, you're finished. But if you concentrate on the what and the why, you're gradually getting in, you're making it your own, it, it, I've never had any cause to take another theory on. I've always used that. What you were going for, it seemed to me, with the four-page Greek speech yeah. about the death of uh, throwing you in the deep Orestes, end. but you were throwing me in the deep end of technique, but at the core of that was truth. Truth, because you can't do it without truth. You, you do those do things and you feel empty if you haven't got the truth. It's like taking the voice away and whispering. Whenever you haven't got the truth yet, or whether you know you think you've got the truth, try doing the same speech, whispering. And if the truth isn't there for you, if you're you're not really right there, so that you have to say it, so it's necessary to do this thing. It it it. it when you take the voice away, we do an awful lot of fakery with the voice. That I would agree with. You know, I would say, well, whisper it. In fact, I'm not sure I didn't ask you to to whisper the. You're saying whispering uh, is sentence. We'll, we'll, we'll find out whether you're true or not. Whispering, we take the voice away and stop fooling yourself that the truth is that quiver in your voice and there's tears in your eyes. That's not what it's about. huh? So I say if you if you got everybody touching, feeling in the dark, uh, that, what is the, it's the truth of what? What is the text? What is the, where are we going with it? Where's the play? Now this man that I saw in London, they they actually smoked dope during it, and they had the they had the birth they had the birth of a of a, of a baby through movement and stuff, and they were exploring all that stuff using a, a pot, and uh, that was the same about the same time I think when all that was happening in New York. That was called the Living Theatre, I believe. Yes, I saw them in in London, and they came out. They opened the thing, it, 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 there must have been 10 people in it, but there were five vomitories in, in, in this theater in London. And one actor would stand in front of one section of the audience and say, I'm gonna take my clothes off. And you were supposed to be terrified they're going to take the clothes off, which in fact they did. I mean, they played a lot of the thing naked at a time when that was, you know, they could have been arrested. But. I gotta take my clothes off. And finally a fellow behind me said, Oh, go on, take them off, that's what we're here for. And the actor didn't know what to do because that's not where the audience was supposed to. Truth. Uh, 